Hi, I'm Matt Sosman, a senior security architect at Microsoft. I get asked all the time, what is Azure Advanced Threat Protection? Well, folks, let's talk about it and I'll explain exactly what it does. Azure ATP is basically the ability to monitor Windows Server Active Directory on-prem AD, and then there's a sensor that you install on the domain controller that then sends signals back up to uh, the cloud to then be able to monitor, detect, and investigate advanced threats such as identities that have been compromised, malicious insider threats, golden ticket, pass the hash, pass the ticket, so on and so forth. When you think about the cybersecurity kill chain, Azure ATP sits inside that red box there. And this is where once an attacker is in the environment and they try to compromise an identity or try to do lateral movement, try to compromise a domain, et cetera, this is where Azure ATP can give you visibility into that and really help you to stop that attack. All right, so let's dive into this thing. When an attacker is moving laterally throughout the organization, you'll need to be able to detect what they're doing at really any stage of that kill chain. And so Azure ATP has a large range of detections that follow across this kill chain. And for example here, if we start on the far left with reconnaissance, uh, this is doing things like LDAP recon. And so LDAP recon is used by attackers to gain critical information about the domain environment. And that information then helps the attacker map the domain structure as well as identify privileged accounts for use in a later time. And so that detection from Azure ATP is triggered based on computers performing a suspicious LDAP enumeration query or queries targeting maybe sensitive security groups. And that's just one of these. Now, if you move to the next uh, link here in the kill chain under compromise credential, Typically, a brute force attack is a common way to compromise credentials. And this is when an attacker is trying to authenticate with multiple passwords on different accounts until a correct password is found or by using one password in a large scale password spray that works for at least one account. And once found, the attacker logs in using that authenticated account. And so Azure ATP can then detect this when it notices multiple authentication failures occur using Kerberos or NTLM or the use of a password spray. Now the next link here in the, in the kill chain is when an attacker attempts to move laterally throughout the environment. And one way that they will do this is through pass the ticket. And a pass the ticket is a lateral movement technique in which attackers steal a Kerberos ticket from one computer and use it to gain access to another computer by reusing that stolen ticket. And so in this type of detection with Azure ATP, a Kerberos ticket is seen used on two or more different computers. And then ultimately, attackers want to establish domain dominance. And on the far right side here, one method for doing this is using DC Shadow. Now, this is really scary in my opinion, because this attack is designed to change directory objects using replication. And this attack can be performed from really any machine by creating a rogue domain controller using a malicious replication process. And when this occurs, Azure ATP triggers an alert when a machine in the network tries to register as a rogue domain controller. Now, this is not a complete set of detections, but I just wanted to show you the breadth of detections that Azure ATP does cover. Here's three examples of how effective Azure ATP can, can be. And when you think about in terms of incident response, one of the very first things that you'll want to do in an incident is stand up Azure ATP to get a good idea of really what's happening. All right, let's talk about some example detections. This is not going to be everything, but it's just gonna give you a taste of what Azure ATP can do. A great example here is the multi-force support and being able to identify a pass a ticket attack across multiple Active Directory forests. And so this is just one of the example detections. I'm pretty excited about this. When you think about a golden ticket attack, this is part of the domain dominance stage of the kill chain that we talked about earlier. And attackers with domain rights can compromise the KRB TGT account. And using that account, attackers can create Kerberos tickets, granting ticket or TGT, that provides authorization to really any resource. And so that forged TGT ticket is called a golden ticket because it allows attackers to achieve lasting network persistence. And so Azure ATP has different golden ticket detections. Here's what one of those, or actually two of those look like. 
Earlier, we talked about a DC shadow attack. And again, it's designed to change directory objects using malicious replication. And so during that attack, DC shadow impersonates a replicator domain controller using admin rights and starts a replication process. So that change is made on one domain controller and then synchronized with other domain controllers. And so this allows you to register the machine account as a domain controller and perform repl replication and send changes to directory objects. Obviously, that's a really scary thing that could do a lot of damage. And so this alert is just an example of why Azure ATP's real-time network detection capability is awesome and really unparalleled. And so the split-second timing of this attack cannot be picked up with event logs. I want to be really clear about that. And it makes undetectable if you're just using a SIM solution. Azure ATP really is what provides you with this advanced alerting capability. All right, for most attackers, one of their top priorities is to gain access to an Active Directory domain controller. And they want to do this to access and steal sensitive data. And that's just one part of the, the chain there. And so with this type of attack vector, Azure ATP triggers an alert when suspicious transfers of data are observed from the monitored domain controllers. And so Azure ATP then looks specifically at that data leaving the domain controller, not the attacker's techniques, which really adds greater visibility into what's actually occurring inside the environment. So this is a great capability. Another one of my favorite detections is the identity theft based on abnormal behavior. And here you can see where we have a user who's trying to perform interactive logins from different workstations and servers and requesting access to different resources he doesn't normally request access to and he's doing all of this outside normal working hours. Uh, this is where we're using machine learning to build that profile on this user to then understand what's normal and not normal with that individual. And obviously this is not normal, so we're going to trigger an alert and uh, you know prompt you to take action. All right, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about hybrid spanning both on-premises and cloud. And defending against attacks in that model can actually be difficult. So let's walk through what a typical attack might look like and what happens if you don't have a solution in place. And so the attack starts with that bad actor leveraging a password spray technique, uh, targeting a large volume of users with few login attempts to avoid really tripping any kind of detection and then gains access to an Office 365 administrator's credential, which has not been protected by multi-factor authentication. And so using those credentials, that attacker then conducts multiple mailbox searches, looking for any kind of sense of information that they can within the company or organization. And so that attacker then sets up processes for automated exfiltration of that data through email. Maybe it's an email forwarding rule uh, in the mailbox, or maybe it's just SharePoint or sharing some of the files outside OneDrive. And at this point, even if the original compromised credentials are actually remediated, like the passwords reset or something, then the data continues to be stolen from that environment because they're already in. And also during that period, the attacker can leverage those stolen credentials found in an email, for example, to then VPN into the on-premises environment. And then from here, they can move laterally within the organization using techniques like pass a ticket uh, to compromise privileged on-premises credentials with really a goal to establish permanent persistence in that environment. And so in this case, the customer or the organization or the company, they didn't find the breach. And in this case, it wasn't found for over 200 days. And so with an attacker that spans you know, this hybrid model of cloud and on-premises, again, these can be quite difficult to find and then investigate. So you've seen the detections that are available through Azure ATP for on-premises attacks. But with Microsoft Cloud App Security and Azure Active Directory Identity Protection, this extends that protection by detecting cloud-based attacks. And it all starts with users sign in to Azure Active Directory, which then detects unusual sign-in information, implementing conditional access on the user that is compromised until that issue has been resolved. And so detections continue for the entire cloud session with Microsoft Cloud App Security, Microsoft's CASB product. And so, for example, MCAS here, for short, can detect suspicious inbox forwarding rules should an attacker start to forward an email to another account. And additionally, it can see if a large amount of data is trying to be exfiltrated to applications that might not be sanctioned for use in the organization. So if the customer or the organization is using, let's say, OneDrive, uh, but the attacker is trying to exfiltrate that data to whatever, Dropbox, you know, this can detect that. And these detections work for uh, an identity across all these different applications. So for example, we can determine impossible travel alerts based on activity for a user both in third-party cloud apps like Dropbox or Slack or G Suite, uh, WebEx, you name it, and Office 365. That's pretty cool. 
So here's an example of our user entity behavioral analysis looks like with Azure ATP and Microsoft Cloud App Security and Azure Active Directory. It's really pulling all that data together in this timeline view to help me form a, a site picture around what's happening with this individual user and determine whether or not that uh, their account's been compromised by an attacker. So kind of cool stuff. Go ahead and pause the video and take a look at this if you want. We'll do another video on this at a future date. All right, folks, here's the call to action. Go out there and read the documentation for Azure ATP. Watch my videos, watch videos from Ignite, learn as much as you can. I'll put these URLs in the description on the video here and on the YouTube channel, just in case you wanna be able to go out and look at these. All right, let's wrap things up. I could go all day, but uh, let's get this taken care of here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I love making these. If you have any questions, hit me up on LinkedIn, reach out to me on Twitter, uh, and I'll make sure to get those answered for you. And if you do want to see any topics that uh, you want to see me address, just let me know. This topic for Azure ATP actually came directly from one of you, my, my viewers. So keep that feedback coming. All right, folks, take care. We'll see you in the next video.